we came across this lone ground squirrel who was happily scamping around in the dust and foraging for food next to the road. Sometimes it seems that he was watching me and at times obviously looking out for danger. A little while later, we came across this family of ground squirrels. Ground squirrels have these definitive uh, light stripes down the sides of their bodies, and they also have these tiny little claws, obviously good for catching insects um, or for burrowing. These ground squirrels were very happy to share their space with the springbuck in the background and it didn't seem that the behaviour of either influenced anyone in any way. Ground squirrels are endemic to the southern part of Africa and especially to this region in the dry arid parts and they're very well adapted. They are sociable creatures also, and um, they live in community burrows. These are very animated little animals, and everything seems to happen at double speed, whether they're scratching for food, burrowing, or just sitting up on their haunches, chewing the food that they've got. As we push into August, uh, we're pushing into one of our windiest months of the year. Along this edge of Mboma, you find a lot of animals just sheltering behind the little island outcrops that there are. We came across these three beautiful kudu bulls really exquisite. Fully developed, mature, unbelievable set of horns on each of them. The males are quite large. They are not heavier than you'd first imagine. They are a big, big animal. They're incredibly deep bodied from the side, but when they sort of move, you get an idea of how narrow they are, ideal for weaving in the forests and scrub that they live mostly in. It's one of the few animals that you'll find cutting through the swampy marshland, through the Muscatherium and new water. And two, three hundred kilometers south, you'll get herds of kudu living in the most arid and dry environments in the Kalahari. Cathadium seeds blowing in the wind. And these huge males walking together across this marshy area. The rest of the environment is fairly flat, but these kudu sort of bring an incredible amount of definition with the horns and a lot of intricacy. 
very special to see that. Today I came across a large group of long-tailed macaques. The first ones I saw were these two large males sitting somewhat separate from the main group, aloof, as males often are. One of them appeared to have a deformed or damaged nose and also earlobes. This species of macaque likes to live close to the coast and will forage in mangrove swamps as well as other kinds of coastal forest and even on beaches. This main group consisted of the females with young infants and what an amazing sight that was to watch. So reminded me of my own children. The females would try to hold on to these infants for as long as they could, but they would wriggle about and jump their way free in the end. Gradually, they made their way across the branches into the parts of the forest where the bulk of the group were. Later, I made my way along the track inside the forest and heard some noise in the canopy, assuming that there was another group of macaques, but in fact, it was dusky langurs. I just managed to get a a little bit of a look at them. In Thai, they're known as spectacled uh, langurs, if you translated the name, because of the lovely white circles around the eyes. While I was filming the langurs, I heard some calling further up the track ahead of me and realized there was indeed another group of macaques there. This was, or seemed to be, the females that didn't have young or possibly adolescent males. Also in this group, there was one (laughs) that was clearly quite hungry. This one really tucked into a shrub that was up there on the side of the cliff, stripping off the newly opened or newly emerging leaf buds with apparent relish. These are horned rock skippers, quite comical little creatures. Buggy eyes, little antenna. Here's the kingpin, stuck to the side wall of the pool. He's a big maned blenny. And the activities on the bottom of this pool involved a lot of jostling a lot of manoeuvring, and there was something that they were feeding on uh, in the crevice of these little boulders. And as it turned out, these tiny little fish are incredibly voracious feeders, barging each other out of the way and really ripping off pieces of flesh. He has a bandit blenny grazing on some algae right in front of the 
the ringleader of the pool. They're an incredibly successful group of fishers. And the blennies and the rock skippers and the mud skippers are all members of this successfully adapted group of fishers. 